I'm about to fulfill one of my biggest dreams ever. Top of the bucket list type of stuff. And here is the deal. I have built my bike out of all pieces, got everything I need to live anywhere, and soon I'll be hitting the road for a long while. I'm about to cycle across all of Africa for one full year. Cairo, Egypt to Cape Town, South Africa. I'll be covering around 13,000 kilometers and I'll be filming it all and here's why. Okay. A lot of people think Africa is a country, which is kind of sad because it's probably the richest continent on earth in terms of resources, diversity, culture, ethnicities, and history. It's neither part of the Eastern nor the Western world and is often put on the sidelines. It has fascinated me for as long as I can remember. Africa plays by its own rules, values, and ways of living. It's so foreign to me that I want to break free from my little bubble and go explore it. I'll be starting the journey by cycling along the ancient Nile Valley of Egypt, then crossing the harsh Sahara Desert through Sudan to finally enter enter the cradle of mankind in Ethiopia. Next, I'll be traversing the Kenyan savanna, passing through the jungles of Uganda and the lush gorilla hills of Rwanda, briefly entering the volcano area of the Congo and leaving the Great Rift Valley after crossing Burundi. I'll then be exploring the national parks of Tanzania, zigzagging along the beaches of Lake Malawi, witnessing the magical sunsets of Zambia, passing by the Okavango Delta of Botswana, cutting across the sand dunes of Namibia, and finally ending our journey at the mythical Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. Africa. But here's the thing, I've never been to Africa before. The longest adventure I've been on was not more than two months, and last time I owned a bicycle was when I was just a kid. But with Project Africa, I'll be cycling through super rural areas, passing by hectic cities and rock-throwing villages, coping with extreme fatigue and a variety of climates, camping meters away from lions and living with tribes, risking malaria, parasites, diarrhea, and not showering for weeks in the desert. Am I terrified? Yes, <laughs> but I'm even more excited. So if you're interested in seeing if I'll be making it alive to the Cape of Good Hope, please consider subscribing down below. I need subscribers, man, come on. <laughs> Rob, what are you doing with your life, man? Come on, wake up. You're spending all of your life savings to live on the road like a hippie, somewhere super uncomfortable and dangerous. Why would anyone do this themselves? Instead of traveling the world and finding yourself, why don't you shut up, find a stable job, and make money like everyone else? Life's already hard enough, dude. It's funny how everyone questions the rebel, but few question the norm. So why am I doing this? I'll be cycling Africa for three reasons. For the adventure, for the stories, and for the impact. My first dream job was to be an explorer, to travel to faraway foreign lands, discover what the world was about and its nature, people, and diversity. I would read Twain, Kipling, Verne's, and old National Geographic's. I was obsessed with atlases and maps. A bit too much, maybe. This is me crying because my interactive globe broke. But I still have to smile for the photo. At only six years old, my friend Augustin and I memorized all the capital cities, countries, and flags in the world. Supervisors at school were so impressed that they would come with printed Wikipedia pages to quiz us on everything we knew. We literally were the six-year-old school legends at this point. As a young teen, I would organize hikes, camping trips, treks, and adventures anytime I could. I craved the discomfort of being out there. That's where I felt the most alive. I then started started getting familiar with photography, writing, and videography. But even though I was proactive, I had barely seen anything outside of my tiny country, Lebanon. There was a whole wide world to explore and learn from, and I was way too curious to just stick to books and a few challenging hikes here and there. The truth was that I was just a young boy regularly going to school and trying to find a way to survive the boredom and conformity that came with it. I like to believe that life can be divided into three phases, and I was still in the first one, the phase of obligation. A phase where we usually live with our parents until around 18 years old. We have to obey them, get familiar with the rules and structures of society, and accept the status quo whether we like it or not. Then you have the phase of responsibility that probably looks like this, finishing university and starting to work right after. Signing that contract, taking that job, paying the bills, supporting our parents. We spend the few holidays we have seeing our family or having that occasional friend trip to Paris, Cancun, or Bangkok 
and con. We commit to a partner, then maybe have kids. We pick our responsibilities within the rules and structure of society. And this phase can be awesome if you live it with purpose. But in the 21st century, finding purpose is very hard. A lot of us lack clarity. The world is moving so rapidly. Many of us fall into survival mode and become part of the rat race. Our choices seem infinite and existential angst is omnipresent. Ah! But in between these two phases, there's one phase that not everybody gets to live. And it's a phase that can also help a lot with finding purpose. It's a phase that I like to call the phase of exploration. And you can live this phase whenever you want. But usually the prime time to do it is the 20s, because that's where you have the most energy and the least amount of money. It's a phase that helps you take better decisions for the rest of your life and optimize your phase of responsibility. And this phase could look completely different for everyone. It could be doing internships in various fields and industries, digging deeper into hobbies, having that side hustle, traveling the world, volunteering, and usually gap years are a very classic and great way to start. Breaking free from the obligations of your early years naturally comes with time. But being able to live with few responsibilities and having the time to explore is a privilege. A privilege you either have or seek, which is not always easy to do, but ultimately it pays off. Exploration is ultimately introspection. It's about getting to know yourself. I've been living this phase of exploration for a while now. I dropped out twice of university, worked in countless different jobs and fields, met so many people, Let's go! and traveled as much as I could. Learned tough lessons and noticed that often life controls you more than you do and that you inevitably go through hard times. But thanks to all this, things are more clear now. I'm pretty sure I found what I love doing and my purpose for the next decade or two at least. And now I want to end my exploration phase with an epic expedition. Something that will change my life forever. A project that will take me from point A to point B, figuratively and literally. In the midst of globalization, this will be a search for meaning, a journey throughout history, culture, ideologies, geopolitics, anthropology, and nature. But above all, it will draw a thick line between childhood and adulthood. It's my rite of passage. It's a way for me to disentangle my belief system from the one I was imposed on growing up. It's a way to go beyond what was handed to me by life. And I'm still young, so it's the perfect time to challenge myself physically and mentally. And if I don't choose to destroy my own foundations, life will. It's that whole make your life hard or life will be harder for you mentality that the Stoics would speak about. I was never outside of my comfort zone for this long. So I'm conscious that there's going to be times where I'll regret doing this and where I'm going to be like, what am I doing with my life? But with that, I'll always try to remember the intentions I have behind this project. And I hope that will help me push through. The second reason why I want to cycle Africa is because it's a lifestyle that I want to experiment with. For most of humankind's existence, we were nomads. Our brains are ones of hunter-gatherers. Our minds and bodies are built for exploring and being on the move. But we progressively became settlers while our genetics barely changed. Culture deformed our natural predispositions. It made us static, focused on optimizing our dopamine flow and designing a society that answers to that demand. And because of short-term thinking, we now have an insanely fast-paced life with more and more complex problems to tackle. Globalization and greed are erasing culture, nature, and diversity. And above all that, we're constantly overstimulated by new and negative information. So how do we change this? Well, that's exactly why I want to take a step back. What I'm looking forward with the Africa trip is to just really see what the world's about, you know? And really see what the world needs the most. I want to distance myself from this meaningless hustle, see what's out there, and analyze where and how my work can positively impact the world. There's a sub-Saharan African saying that goes like this. The rest of the world has watches. But in Africa, we have time. Project Africa will be a slow, raw, and ethical journey. I want it to be minimalist, eco-conscious, and human-powered. I want to wake up with the sun and pursue a lifestyle where I belong to as few systems as possible. Plus, cycling is the perfect sweet spot between walking, which is way too slow, and being motorized, where you miss out on so much of the fun, meritocracy, and details of the journey. With cycling, you're rooted in the present moment. Like right now, I'm trying to dodge rocks and stuff. You know? And finally, the last reason why I want to be cycling Africa is to document the whole journey and make videos that matter. One of the most fascinating periods of history for me is the age of exploration, where a select few went on long and risky expeditions, plunging into the unknown in search for knowledge, for science, for truth. Sociologists, astronomers, biologists, artists, they were all writing and drawing and documenting what they would find out there to make up the archives of humankind. Six centuries later, this is kind of what I'll be doing, but in a modern way, with the use of a camera, a microphone, and a laptop. 
and with three goals, to entertain, educate, and inspire. In addition of making a video for each country I'll be passing by, I also want to be focused on videos that I'll be calling side quests. The side quests will be stories of people, places, and crazy adventures that stand out. Stories that bridge humanity together, break cultural prejudice, promote local tourism, and push the audience and myself to be more open-minded, curious, and daring. There's one last pillar I want to be focusing on, and it is sustainability, as you can see behind me. Building a more durable future for our planet and societies is the fight of the century. And I think that the African continent has so much potential that is disregarded. So while crossing it, I want to raise awareness about the amazing initiatives and projects that already exist about education, wildlife preservation, humanitarian causes, and any other of the sustainable development global goals. I'm already reaching out to multiple organizations, and with them, I hope to showcase the projects and the people that are making a positive change, and through it, support solution-oriented initiatives and grow a community of change makers. To be honest, I'm not fully ready to start this trip. I could have waited to be more financially comfortable. I could have waited for my <coughs> sickness to go. It's been a week I've been sick. I could have waited for more sponsors to answer. I could have trained so much more to be physically ready. But I also believe that there's never a perfect time to start. And that's why this trip starts right now. Shadows in the sky Footsteps in the night Behind me Targets in their sight Running out of light To save me Red moon on the rise You say your last goodnight While I Gripping at my skin The walls of night closing Around me One last sleepless night Until the other side Can say starts with a little push. To keep on moving forward and not fall, you need energy, effort, momentum. To quench my curiosity and thirst for travel, I'm becoming a vagabond. It's a journey of discovery that will require vulnerability, empathy and courage. It's a challenge of beliefs, a seize of comforts. But especially, it's the growth of a project bigger than myself. It's scary, it's thrilling. I just need to move forward, rotation after rotation, pedal after pedal, to be on the move. I'm feeling the adventure. Everything I want to become is on this road. A purpose-based rebel, a creator of stories, a modern explorer. Thank you for watching until here. This is not gonna be an easy expedition. And so here's how you can help. First, financial support. I work very, very hard on my videos and YouTube ad revenue is not at all a sustainable source of income. So if you're a corporation or any other entity that is interested in my values and mission, please reach out. It would be incredible to collaborate with you guys. If you're an individual and wanna support, I started a Patreon, so I would really appreciate any type of support. And if you have any other questions about the journey, please comment them below. I'll be answering them in a future Q&A that I'll be doing. And we've done a website. It's projectafrica.bike, so you can check it out in the link in the description also and uh yeah that's it and as you can see the journey starts very soon we're in cairo please subscribe don't forget i'll see you very soon peace out